Hey there, it's author and attorney Kelly O'Connell of Knockout Radio, offering one scintillating podcast after another, or something like that. Well, tonight we focus on Kamala Harris, but first, weird news. Now, we talked yesterday about the uh, guy that was swallowed by a whale. Here's another whale of a story. Teen critically injured after a whale breached, landed on boat. And breaching means coming up out of the water. So it was an Australian teenager, and he was on a boat, Nick Myhill 18, on a recreational fishing vessel south of New South Wales, south coast of New South Wales, and uh, about 200 miles south of Sydney. And local law enforcement received a Mayday call and uh, Mayhill and his stepfather, Matt, were both transported to a local hospital. The uh, older man was treated for facial lacerations and a concussion. But the youngster has been put into a coma, or he's in a coma. You see when you have a whale come up out of the water and land on a boat, it's got to have one heck of a impact and um, there was no warning, no time to react. The, the uh, whale comes out of the water and just lands on top of him. So really very, very crazy. All right, here's another little bit of weird news. Michigan hotel owner calls woman. Dumb Democrat after she complained her toilet had overflowed. A hotel owner allegedly threw out two women and their five children in the middle of the night after one of the moms sought help for a flooding toilet. Um, So TripAdvisor is not treating these people very well, but um, they did say on their TripAdvisor website page, due to recent events that has attracted media attention and has caused an influx of review submissions that do not describe a first-hand experience, we have temporarily temporarily suspended publishing new reviews for this listing, TripAdvisor says. If you've had a first-hand experience at this property, please check back soon. We're looking forward to receiving your review. So, it, the, the place had already had a couple of, maybe a couple of dozen complaints. And uh, so, anyway, the two families had just returned around 11 p.m., and uh, one of the kids heard the water running and discovered the flood. The person at the desk, who was the owner, quite rudely asked if she had shut the valve off. She replied that she hadn't and stated she was seeking his help. And uh, he didn't like that answer. And so, because she didn't turn off the water when it was flooding, and by the way, if you ever have a flooding toilet, you can get down on your hands and knees. And the uh, little valve is right down there on the left, usually. But anyway, he stated to the lady that since I refused to turn the water off, it was my responsibility. He was calling the police to get me off the property for malicious destruction. We needed to pack our bags and leave immediately. He called me an idiot, a dumbass, and several other derogatory names. I was in such shock, but managed to start recording this about halfway through the conversation. His epithets, in other words, his insults, also included calling her a dumb Democrat... (laughs) (laughs) and he told her she was responsible (coughs) for the plumbing saying you rented the room it's your bathroom now and so uh he was going to file a police report but then he dropped the charges so uh it left the lady miss biella absolutely distraught okay so that's your weird news all right the issue tonight is kamala harris And I've never, uh, honestly, I've been watching politics since I was a kid. I have never seen anything like this. I've never seen anybody like Kamala Harris get up as far as she has so far over her head. Now, what, how did this happen? What, what happened? Well, I think this is an example of something that we're going to learn more and more about as time goes by. If you make your criteria for getting somebody into office or giving them a job, giving them an opportunity, trusting them with anything, and your criteria is their race or their gender or their sexual orientation or how woke they are or 
anything else that doesn't have to do with competence, you're running the risk of a disaster. And in this case, I don't think I've ever seen a worse public official at that high of a level than Kamala Harris because she doesn't really seem to have done anything in the couple of months that she's been in office. She's been interviewed a couple of times and you know how she laughs. Am I going to the border? (laughs) I've been there before. (laughs) I mean, totally inappropriate laughter. And they say that she laughs the way that she does because she's very nervous. And um, so she laughed again when they asked her about the border again. And she said, why are you asking me about, keep asking me about the border? I haven't been to Europe either, as if those were the two choices. And she said, uh, why do you keep bothering me about that? So uh, just a completely incoherent answer. So what you're looking at now is the failure of the PC politics, of woke politics. And you have to blame it on the Democrats because they were they traded their soul to get back into office. All right. So... The title, VP Kamala Harris, so far out of her league, she's like a traveler from the 12th century. You can't disagree with that. And Kamala is Democrats' greatest mistake. Cannot be fired, will take down the party like the Titanic. I will stick by that for the next four years. All right. Summarize it. It's blood on the moon. Now, what is blood on the moon? You've heard the phrase before. Uh, Blood moon, blood on the moon. It represents the apocalypse, actually, because at the end of times, according to the Bible, you're going to see a blood red moon. That's going to be one of the signs. So Kamala has put blood on the moon and it has just caused dread to spread across the party. They don't know what to do. And what's the problem? The real problem is that there's no way to get rid of her. Uh, You know, she's like the mother-in-law that shows up and won't leave. Um... She can't be fired. And so I liken her tenure to be like slow motion poison poisoning. Somebody gets radiated, they get radioactive poisoning or they get, you know, some sort of small amount of poison strychnine, but the end of the story is they're going to die. It's just slow motion. So she's got three and a half more years to screw up. She's in over her head. She's not going to be educated into the job. Even the White House was frustrated her. She went down to Guatemala, wasn't it? When she got off the plane, what did she see? The first sign was, go back home, Kamala. Trump won. She doesn't know how to handle criticism. She gets real nervous. She takes it offensively. And she laughs. Her her answer is laughing, and it makes her sound like a psychopath. I'm sorry, but that's just it. So... She's too visible to hide. She's the elephant in the room. And I'm not saying she's fat, although she is kind of tall. She's too visible to hide, but her shortcomings are spectacularly apparent. And it all seems to portend one thing, my friends, and that is T-R-U-M-P. Now, what is the history of Kamala? How did she get there? Well, she was chosen. As you recall, she ran for office and she did not do very well. She she was behind in her her own state. And so she was going to apparently drop out. And what it ends up happening is she's a person who Biden chooses because she's black and she's female. And we're on a bucket list. America's now a bucket list co- country, by the way, right? We haven't had something. We haven't had a one-eyed... Uh, non-binary, um, you know, let's see what else, uh, atheist, um, what, what other, you know, one-legged, one-eyed, seven-fingered person in office before, so we have to bring that individual in. And so you've got this situation with her, but it is, it, I've just never seen anything like this. I've never seen it. Um, All right, so I've got 55 things you didn't know about uh, Kamala and probably didn't want to know. But before I get into this, let me just say that she did supposedly sleep her way into office. She went to Hastings Law School, Cal Berkeley, 
When she graduated, she went and worked for the state. And then she had an affair. She got in the prosecutor's office at, at San Francisco and she had an affair with Mayor Brown, well, before he was mayor, and he appointed her to two different offices that started her political career. She had an affair with him at 60, and she was, I think, 29. And so she wouldn't have been able to do what she did unless that had happened. He was married, by the way, although they were separated. But uh, he uh, cut ties with her after he became mayor. All right. But anyway, here's 55 things you didn't want want to know about Kamala. Number one, born in Oakland, Kamala Devi Harris. Her mom is Indian. Born in 1964 to Shaimala Gopalan, cancer researcher from India, and Donald Harris, an economist from Jamaica. Her dad is black from Jamaica. Her mom is Indian, not African-American. Her parents met at UC Berkeley. Her mother chose Kamala's name, which means lotus. The lotus position is very famous. <clears throat> so Harris's parents divorced when she was seven. First grade, she was bust. As a child, she went <laughs> both to a black Baptist church and a Hindu temple. That, that right there, that's the foundation of her confusion. Visited India as a child. Attended middle school and high school in Montreal. Oh, my gosh. In Montreal, she and her younger sister led a successful demonstration of their apartment building in protest of a policy that banned children from playing on the lawn. Oh my gosh, seeds of greatness. After high school, Harris attended Howard University, traditionally black. Then she goes to law school in San Francisco. She passed the bar in 1990. Her family was skeptical. These are all numbers, by the way. I don't want to bore you with reading them off. Harris dated Willie, Willie Brown in 1994, powerhouse political couple. And he appointed her to California Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board and Medical Assistant Commission. And that paid her $80,000 on top of a prosecutor's salary. 95 Brown was elected mayor. And uh, she was recruited then into the San Francisco District Attorney's Office. And um, 2003, she ran for district attorney, elected in a runoff. Same election, Gavin Newsom elected mayor. Three years as district attorney. Heard the conviction rate from jump from 52 to 67. Um, then she was attorney general. And uh, became friends with Obama in 2004. Um I'm looking for anything else that happened. Please, come on, come on. 32, number 32 here. Didn't didn't address police brutality enough. Uh, about 2013, President Barack Obama recorded, was recorded as referring to Harris as the best-looking attorney general in the country. He later admitted it was sexist, but he didn't care. She was a Supreme Court nominee. I can't imagine that. Mary's Doug Emhoff, a white guy in 2014 won her senate race in 2016 defeating loretta sanchez a moderate uh went viral in 2017 for sharp questioning of jeff sessions and so all right so we're running out of stuff here we're running out of all right 45 she knows how to cook. She loves cooking. Her favorite books, Native Son by Richard Wright, Kite Runner, Joy Luck Club, Song of Solomon, Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe. She wakes up at 6 a.m. She's a tough boss, she says. Uh, not a fan of being called the female Obama. One of the few times her father spoke publicly about her was when he reprimanded her for suggestively pointing to her Jamaican heritage when asked about her support for the legalization of marijuana. And he called it a fraudulent stereotype. Uh, her Wikipedia page edited 408 times, number 53. Elected in November, first female African-American or and Asian-American vice president. All right. So what is going to happen here? I hope I, w I didn't bore you too much with those. But uh, let, let's get down here. They 
Democrats know that they have a da- disaster on her hands for whatever reason. She might be a smart lady. I, You know, it's like a lot of these public people. I can't believe the number of people who graduate number one from their school. Dr. Fauci graduated number one. He's 78, though. I mean, he might be a little bit used up like an old toothpaste, you know, container that's all rolled up and stepped on. But uh, so many of these people that graduate number one don't sound like it. It doesn't sound like they're able to um, they're able to think on their feet or put together compelling or interesting statements. They just don't. So what's the story with her? So what can Biden do? What can the Democrats do? Folks, the, it's, it's a disaster. It's impossible. Here's the title of one article. The vice president is the only person the president can't fire. Article 2, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution. The president, vice president, and all civil officers of the United States shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. And, you know, so how would he get rid of her? He'd have to leave office. If he'd left office, then she becomes president. If he gets voted out of office, he can get rid of her that way. But so so what's going to happen? I mean, this is a serious, this is as serious a problem as you can imagine with the Democratic Party. Their leader is frail. He's feeble. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. The people on the left, the Democrats, pretend like it doesn't really matter because he's strong. He's actually strong, you know, and he takes a few halting steps and he makes his statements. He reads the teleprompter, but you, you just feel without doing any analysis, you feel like he's very feeble because you know, he's feeble. It's like somebody who just learned to walk again. You know, it's like somebody who came out of a coma. He's got cobwebs. So the, here's the problem. To get these guys elected, they chose to get someone who was on the cusp, black, female. And she is not a popular pe- person. People don't like her. Okay, why don't they like her? Well, let's let's ask. She seems totally insincere. She um, is asked about the border, obviously doesn't want to talk about it, and starts laughing. You know, it's, I mean, no matter what, You could get up there and lie like they all do in Congress on the left about the border not being a big deal. And it's a great opportunity for America to get some wonderful people to come in here illegally, of course. But she doesn't even do that. There is something missing from this lady. And she's so terrible. And the reaction to everybody, and I'm not saying she's the worst in any particular way, but the impression that she makes... I guess I am saying she's the worst. She's the worst and people know it. The impression people get from her is that she's incompetent or she's not trained well enough or <clears throat> she's in over her skis. She's Peter Principle. She got so high up that she's now incompetent to do the job that she's been put into. And here's the problem. And this is the dilemma. Joe Biden could have a health crisis any day now. He just seems to be on the edge of of competence. Of uh, he's he's demented. He's got something wrong with him. And that's not even the point of this this uh, podcast, guys. But if he goes and she gets in there, I mean, somehow she figured out a way to be worse than Biden. So. There's two problems. Well, there's three problems. Number one, with her the way she is, she can't really, she can't really take over for Biden. So he has to stay in there. That's the first problem. The second problem is if she gets in, she doesn't have the chops. She doesn't have the temperament. Doesn't have the experience. She doesn't have the instincts. She doesn't have the temperament to do the job. And so she can't really do the job. Now, I guess they can do what to her for her, what they did for Biden. They can prop her up, but it's going to be a lot messier with her because people are going to expect her to speak off the top of her head. They're going to expect her to take hard, hard positions. So the third problem is I think she's unelectable. 
I mean, I don't think that she can get from, and, and this is just based on what people have said, what people have seen of her and what they've said. But, you know, I think everybody is saying it. The White House called up CNN and said, you know, Kamala is terrible. And I think probably if that happened, and I was trying to figure out what they had to gain by doing it, are they trying to shame her into taking the position more seriously? Are they trying to get her to quit? The only real, the only real opportunity that these guys have to save this this presidency, because you know Biden has been a disaster so far. He's he's working with the Russians, who used to be public enemy number one, and supposedly were fighting back against China. Except China gave his son a billion dollars to manage. So. The only thing that I see that she can do is to drop out. And then the question would be, who would they put in behind her? And maybe they would try to put in somebody like Susan Rice. Now, what would be good about that, for them anyway, is that Susan Rice is obviously a very ambitious lady, and she's supposed to be the real president. She's calling the shots, or she's one of this this cabal, this, this uh, troika or whatever it is behind the throne so they're going to want to save the female and the black and and if they put rice in there they would do that but rice has got tremendous downside i mean she was caught lying about benghazi and she's ex- exceedingly uh cocky and arrogant she's just ex- she's very masculine and uh so i don't know if that's the answer either but so so anyway Let's sum up the problem. The Democrats sold their soul. They did it a long time ago, but it's really, you know, Satan's coming and get, he's getting his he's getting his uh, payments. He's doing the, um, get, you know, go, he's going door to door with them now and he's shaking them down and they have to, you know, they have to pay insurance payments to Satan now. But um, they got Joe in there because Joe was somebody that was known by everybody as supposedly a beloved person. And the fact that he wasn't competent doesn't appear to be competent. And I think everybody's thinking that deep down means that he can't last. So the, for number two, you would think in this situation, the number two that you got would have to be someone with real competence, real substance. And you know how they got Pence, who was kind of like a minister. He's kind of like a Presbyterian minister very laid back, easygoing, dependable, not a traitor, and uh, he was perfect for Trump. But who they got, you have you have a highly, highly unstable person in the White House right now. And I'm, I'm saying just by health, just by mental health, just by physical health, he looks like Skeletor, by the way. There, does the man not have any gums? He smiles, you can only see teeth. I mean, he's not healthy. So you would have to, they should have gone and found the strongest person, somebody like this uh, mansion, this guy from West Virginia could have been a good vice president because he's everything that Biden isn't. He's moderate, he's smart, he's steady, he keeps his own opinion, can't be buffaloed, can't be pressured. But you've got instead Kamala, who just seems like a joke. She seems like a high school kid who was picked because she was the tallest girl to get up and be the president in the high school uh, play or performance, whatever. She just seems so far over her head. So, they sold their soul. Biden has a limited shelf life. Then comes the real problem. We have a problem now because he's not competent. And he doesn't seem competent. Then you've got the really big, the 900-pound donkey in the room is... Kamala is not able to lead. So if you put her in that position, it's going to be a total collapse. But you can't not put her in the position. You can't get rid of her. You'd have to impeach her. She can't be fired. So that's the, that's, and, and, and that was their selling of the soul. I think this sets up everything for Donald Trump to be reelected. I don't see any other most likely outcome. Anyway, that's my Kamala speech. I'm sticking with it. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a great night. And um, please consider subbing 
joining this this podcast so we can get more people involved and put your comments in there like it if you if you don't mind but anyway kelly o'connell and it is knockout podcast and uh we're gonna get out of here but uh, have a great night ciao